Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. My name is Sheila Marmon, and I'm the founder and CEO of Mirror Digital. Welcome to Mirror Moments, episode eight. And today we're gonna to be talking about football and everything you wanna know about connecting with the Hispanic market in the media space. I have some amazing folks joining me today to join us on this conversation. And uh, I'm gonna have each of them tell you a little bit about themselves, what they love about football, and um, how we're going to help you all connect with the Hispanic community. So why don't we get started with, um, with Sarah. Sarah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, yeah, and how you got started in the industry. Yeah. Thanks, Sheila. Excited to be here. Um, let's see where to start. Um, I so so I grew up in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood, Mexican neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. Um, I am Puerto Rican and Palestinian. Um, so uh, soccer was kind of always around, but I don't I didn't really follow it until I started working for Major League Soccer, and that's when I got really invested. And this was back in 2006. This is where I met Lupe. Um, and that was really my first like World Cup experience in watching soccer every day. And then um, I was there for a couple of years managing Major League Soccer sponsorships as well as the Mexican National Team sponsorship. And then um, did some things here and there in between and then landed on the sponsorship side at Wells Fargo. So on the brand side of things, also managing the Mexican National Team and Major League Soccer again. And then as of May of this year, I became a co-owner of uh, the North Carolina Courage, which is a women's um, top flight team uh, and, the, and the world's best women's league here in, in the U.S. And um, really, ex I, I mean, I could talk about soccer all day and night at this point. Uh, but yeah, I just I just love the global <laughs> aspect of it. I think um, even if you're rivals, like you've got such a passion for the sport and it is, you know, its own language really around the world. Oh, I love that. And uh, Sarah's clearly got the receipts here on knowing about soccer. So I'm <laughs> excited to hear everything she's going to tell us today. Um, Rafa, El Alcalde, please tell us a little bit about yourself and um, and the industry and getting into the industry. How are you, Sheila? Hello, everybody. My name is Rafa Fernandez Brito, otherwise known as for my years on the radio as El Alcalde, the mayor. Um, I was born in El Salvador and came to the U.S. and to New York City when I was like 14 years old. And believe it or not, I studied mechanical engineering in college and worked in marketing for Coors Brewing Company for a few years until I decided to follow my passion, which was always sports. And I quit my job and decided to start a new life following doing something that I always wanted to do. So I went from making a lot of money to making $150 a game calling St. John's men's basketball. But I was the happiest man in the world. And I knew, I knew it wasn't going to be the end of my story. So I, I, I ended up at Univision and was part of the group that created Univision Radio Network. And that's what Lupe and I kind of got to know each other. Uh, I was the host of... Uh, Probably the most successful sports radio talk show in Spanish uh, on Univision Radio, Locura Deportiva. And I've been lucky enough to be exposed to all, all sports. You know, soccer has always been the beginning of, the, of everything. But when I moved to Univision, I, I was the voice of the NFL in, in Spanish for, for 13 years for Univision. I've done a lot of boxing, UFC. I'm actually the only Spanish broadcaster to have called the finals of all three major sports in the U.S., and the final four. So I, I've been lucky. I've been I've been extremely lucky to have been able to witness some of the work of the picture you see behind me is me at the new re remodeled Maracana Stadium in 2014, which is the last World Cup that I attended. And I have covered five of them. And there are so many opportunities that we can have that we can use and create to reach to our audience and to actually connect with them. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to share what I can and what I've been through and, and happy to be jo joined by so many, so many illustrious people from the industry. <laughs> Absolutely. And what amazing experience you have across so many sports. I think that you're going to bring a lot to the table as we talk about how we connect with the Latino community around sports and around so many other things. And then last but not least, my colleague, Luis de los Santos, please tell us a little bit about yourself and getting into the industry. Wow. So first of all, Rafa, Sarah, wow, love your stories. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so mine's also very similar, maybe a blend of both y'all. Uh, I was born and raised in, in South Texas, right on the U.S.-Mexico border. And it's really interesting in that uh, down here when I was growing up, uh, soccer wasn't a primary sport in school. It was American football. So I grew up playing, you know, Texas high school football, all that kind of stuff. 
And it wasn't until my first job in New York City working for a big uh, ad agency that I got exposed to soccer. And I actually went to the World Cup in Korea, Japan in 2002. That's that photo that's in in Yokohama, (laughs) Japan. And so that was the first time I actually got to see and feel a passion. And I was kind of like, what's going on here? And fell in love with the sport. Um, And since then, you know, this is almost, what, 19, 20 years uh, since then. Uh, I've done everything you can think of around the sport, working with every major brand on the client side, uh, on the agent side, working for big media companies and so forth. So, um, again, a little bit of both y'all stories kind of blended in one. And I've been to the last five World Cups also, Rafa, so uh, from Russia and what have you. And one of the things that I love and one of my favorite things is um, you get to meet people from all over the world at each one of these events. And you get to see, I think, Sarah, you mentioned this earlier, is um, it's a common language. So it doesn't matter what ethnic background, where you come from, or what sport it is, you know, what have you. If you have a jersey on, that's kind of why you have this, it automatically starts a conversation and you get to feel that passion and that opens the doors for many other things. So yes, I've been, it's, I've been with Mirror Digital now a couple of years and excited to talk about all these great things we have. And and again, thanks uh, Sarah and Rafa for, for joining Sheila and I. Yeah. And as we know, um, sports and especially football is is an incredible passion point for the Latinx community. And I want to just kind of get a sense of what you find interesting about what you do and how you feel it connects to the community. And um, as, as you talk about that, how do you describe your community? Do you think of it as Hispanic American? Do you think about it as Latinx? Do you think about it as your country of origin? Just how do we think about um, that blend, you know, football being an international language and in so many ways that we um, connect and think about the uh, Latinx or Hispanic community in the United States. Somebody jump in and get I'll started. jump in, I'll jump in. I, I love it. You know, I, I, as I mentioned, I, I am not Mexican, but I grew up in a Mexican neighborhood. And so, um, you know, for, I can't remember, almost 20 years. And so I grew up in the neighborhood, went off to college, and it wasn't until I left college that I realized how sometimes uh, members of this community were, were felt forced to be in the shadows, right? So I would go to a restaurant, and it, it would be the busboy or the guys in the kitchen that were Mexican, and it was, you know, very much, you know, kind of silent, let's just service these people and, and move on. And I was like, this is so odd. These are not the Mexicans that I know, right? The Mexicans I know have their ranchero music, either wearing their mariachi you know, outfits proudly as their go about to go perform and I hear this music and these conversations like all the time. And so um, it was very rare. It was not rare. It was very strange for me to, to, to go off to college and, and, and kind of just not see my people like visible. Right. It was really actually really disheartening. And it wasn't until I started working in um, the, the sponsorship space around the Mexican national team that I realized like, okay, yeah, people may not like corporate sponsorship for the fans. We're like, Oh, these, you know, suits, right? And ties are ruining the game, but it's through these brand dollars that help put on these events that make people really, you know, they may be working their asses off all day long, all year round, but they'll save money that they don't send back home to buy a ticket and a jersey and go to the game and to be proud, right? And be a Mexico and, and really like embrace it the whole day. And so to me, that feels really um, empowering, right? And I think for the brands to recognize this, this audience, um, as really an economic powerhouse to invest. Did Sarah freeze for you all? Uh, yes. yes. So, so Rafa, 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 you want to jump in, Rafa? Oh, man, she was at such a good point, oh. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Sarah, oh, you're, you're back. back. You froze at economic powerhouse, and it was like, Z-. <laughs> That's probably where I needed to stop right there. It was, it was basically giving credit, credit to the brands. <laughs> for, for investing in the community, right? So that, that that's really the underscore of the message. You know, that was a drop of the microphone literally right there. Yes, mic drop, mic drop, mic drop. Who else uh, <laughs> wants to jump in on that topic? Well, you know, one of, the, one of the singular things about our community is that even though we are seen as, as one, when people refer to the Latino community, they look at us as one group, but amongst ourselves, we are Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, Salvadorian, Dominicans. And so we, that's one of the issues, not, not a problem, but one of the things that I think as Latinos we need to fix, especially in this country, you have to see each other as one and fight for the same things. But when it comes to sport, I think it unites people. 
I think you forget about, you could be, I'm wearing right now, one of the things about being from El Salvador and having only been to two World Cups with, with, the, with my country is that when the World Cup comes, I become either Brazilian or Italian or Argentinian, whoever, whatever player is for my teams that I root for, be it Barcelona or be it Manchester United, if there's a team from that country that I kind of like, I, I follow that team or it, it depends. It, you saw me in the picture, I was wearing, I'm wearing the Brazil jersey and now I'm wearing the, the, the Argentina. But I think when it comes to each other, I think it's very important for, for sponsors to realize that there are so many ways to, to get to our community. There are so many ways to make their community feel like we are paying attention to them. And it's not necessarily, when you talk about soccer, you're not just talking to Mexicans. I know it's the, it's the majority of the audience here in the United States. And that's one of the issues I had when I went to Univision that, you know, 70% of the audience is from Mexico, but I cover all sports. And they, kept, they, kept, they told me my show wouldn't last two weeks. It lasted the 13 years I was there and seven more because people, from our community are passionate about whatever we follow. It doesn't matter if it's boxing, baseball, if it's soccer, if it's MLS, if it's Liga MX, if it's La Liga, you name it. If we follow that team or that player, we're going to be passionate about it. And I think that's one of the, one of the big opportunities that sponsors have in, to, to connect to our, to our audience, to our, to, our, to, our, to our community. So I see ourselves more and it's, you know, when I worked for Univision and, and before, it was more about the community, the Latino community, and, and thinking of ourselves as Latinos. But for my last years, eight years here in Cleveland, my work with the Diversity and Inclusion Department and the Cavaliers as an organization has been more about making the rest of the community a be aware of the fact that, yes, we were born in a different country or we speak a different language, but we are all Cleveland. We all care about what the city that we live in. We all care about the products we consume. So it, it's a big difference now, my approach as to how to connect with the community, but I, I'm also involved in connecting the rest of the community and making sure that they count on what we bring to, to the communities we live in. I love yeah. that. Lupe, what about your perspective? Well, so look, as a Latino, you know, born and raised in the U.S., I, I identify, obviously, the reason I'm wearing the U.S. team is because I identify myself as American first. Now, my family's of Mexican heritage, right? That's the background. So if Mexico's playing, I root for Mexico. Uh, but if they're playing the U.S., I'm rooting for the U.S. <laughs> so so <laughs> that's what they're playing against each other. Interesting. Oh, but, and then, and then, but then kind of like how Rafa was saying, it's really cool, though, because I have so many Latino friends beyond being Mexican, that it, I have a bunch of Argentinian friends. So when Argentina is playing, I'm rooting for Argentina because I'm also, I care about my, my community, right? I hope I care about my friends. Same thing, the Brazilians or uh, Costa Ricans and especially the underdogs. Like one of my favorite, uh, ex I want to share real quick. When in Russia, uh, uh, Panama qualified for the World Cup for the first time, I don't know how long. And I think I'd ever, maybe, I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But I remember it was really interesting because I went to, I actually got tickets to go to one of the games and they were playing, I want to say, I think they were playing Portugal which, you know, with the famous Ronaldo, what have you. And and they were getting their butts whipped, but they scored a goal. And, and they Christ. lost something like four to one, five to one. Oh, my God, it became a party. Panamanians were like, oh, my God, our first World Cup, our first goal. And it was a cool <laughs> thing where, where, you know, and you look at look at it as, as a Germany, like Germany, they lost to Brazil, I think, like one time they lost like four to one. And they thought it was the worst thing ever where the Panamanians, it was the best thing ever, right? And it was just amazing to learn about the Latino cultures and embrace them and share them, right? So that's super important. But bringing it back to brands, like um, that's why not focusing on just one thing, it's, it's, um, it, it is not the right strategy. And one-offs is the worst thing to do. So in other words, if you're going to come in, you can use soccer as a passion point, a cultural passion point to enter and begin the conversation. But the key word is begin the conversation. What soccer happens all year round, actually. So there's things happening, you know, 10 months out of the year because uh, they take a couple months off. But then that opens the doors to all the other sports and passion, because the other thing that's really important that I, I'd like to share with uh, the audience here is it's not one or the other. So it's not soccer or baseball. It's not soccer or basketball or so forth. It's both. It's soccer and it's all three of them, all four of them. So it's just a stepping point to begin the conversation and understanding them, showing that you care about them. So that's I mean, that's the big uh, takeaway I'd like to share. I love it. And so a couple of things that I heard, um, the World Cup, a way to unite, 
um, the, the Latino diaspora in, in really a passion point that lots of people can connect to. But one event, there are so many more in soccer, and then even beyond soccer, there are lots of other sports. Um, that And it really comes down to the fact that the Latino community is very focused on being passionate and, you know, kind of representing the city that they're from and the community that they're from. And they're going to be they're going to be involved and engaged um, no matter what, because they're repping hard. OK, so I got those things. I would love to talk a little bit about how you've seen um, soccer programs and other sports programs as well executed from a marketing perspective that has done well with connecting. And really, you know, thinking about it and not just, oh, the sponsorship of the games, that's an obvious one, but what's been innovative, you know, bringing in digital components or something new? Is there anything that you thought that was particularly well done that you could share with us on a high level, you know, without, um, you know, giving away anything proprietary, just, you know, any learnings or best practices? Sarah, you, you know, trying to narrow it down, quite frankly. Yeah, no, there's, uh, there's, oh, there's lots of good stuff out there. That's the hard part. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff. I, I, on my years at Univision, so we did so much with with the World Cup because a lot of the things that brands also need to understand is that the the World Cup is really not just that one month of the year. Next one is going to be in November, by the way, because it's being it being held in Qatar. It won't be in the summer, but it, it is a four year period. It's kind of like the, the qualifying, the road to, and then there's so much that you can take advantage of. I had done a couple of things that were that worked very well. You know, we we had an all state, and you know, obviously the thing is you're in good hands with all state. So we did a feature that it was actually a capsule that we we went and and did history on all the best goalkeepers. In, in the uh, in the history of of of, of football, and, and that was a great way to connect the brand with the sport. And I think that's one of the, that's always the key. It doesn't always work that way. We done you know with with Home Depot. We did uh, Las Leyendas, the legends of of, of of the World Cup, and and that's another thing to understand that even though Mexico is the biggest population here in this country, when you want when you're trying to reach out to the, it doesn't necessarily have to be just about the Mexican. Because at the end of the day, the fan is a football fan. The fan is a, a sports fan. So when you talk about the World Cup, there's nobody, I don't care where you're from, if you talk about Diego Maradona, Johan Cruyff, Mario Kempes, whatever, whoever won the World Cup in whatever year, you, you wake a passion up. And, and then if you tell stories about that, that not really, we did, a, we did a, a program about just stories that people don't really know about of the World Cup. And, and I think those are the things that attract the audience and, and connect with the brand and the, and, and the listener or viewer in this case. When, when you tell stories, when you, when you put people in the scene of the action, not necessarily at the game, but so much more around the game that is, that is up there for the taking. I love it. I love it. Any other examples that we can share? I, I was not going to talk about my own work, but I think it is you important can. to talk about no, it. That's the best, that's the best share. stuff. Yeah, please share. Well, please. well to, to, to Rafa's point, because it is, you know, it, it is, yeah, the U.S. is very, as we're talking about the Latino audience, it's, you know, we know 70% of the 60 million Latinos are Mexican, right? So it's really easy for brands to get caught up in Mexican, um, in the Mexican community and in, in, in um, sports there. But I will say for, for Wells Fargo, around, um, the World Cup in 20, uh, sorry, in, yeah, in 2018, and also the Gold Cups, like some of the regional tournaments that take place. What what I did was I, you know, based on customer feedback, because they're like, hey, that's great, we're rooting for Mexico, but what about my country, right? And so we actually created, um, we don't have the rights, we didn't have sponsor, we cannot sponsor every team that's out there, we just don't have the dollars for it. Um, but what I did was I created um, low cost, you know, design debit cards, free debit cards. If you're already a Wells Fargo customer, you could pick um, whichever country you want to root for or wherever you're from. And so it, it was like not necessarily major thinking or innovative thinking, but no other bank had offered that before. We did, mm -hmm. we opened up thousands of new accounts as a result, right? And I'm thinking, and it, we don't have that the rights. All it says, it's the colors of the team, maybe the country name, and then um, the number 10, but no logos because we didn't have rights. And so that that's still, yeah, that's still, we do have a U.S. It, we don't have the rights, but we have the red, white, and blue colors. And so that that was really neat to see that um, that yield for recognizing all you know the rest of the communities um, that do exist in, in uh, here in the U.S. So um, yeah, I'll stop there. 
<laughs> before, before you go, before you go, Lupe, I think what, what, what Sarah just said is very important here, especially when you talk about World Cup. Yep. You don't need the rights no. to either a World Cup or a team to take a full advantage of, of, of what the World Cup has to offer and, and on the, a full advantage of the opportunity to reach out to, yep. to, to whatever community you're trying to reach out to. Yeah, so so I'll share a cool project. I won't name a lot of brands or anything, but it was a tequila company I was working for that wanted to tap into the excitement uh, within the Latino community of the World Cup that was coming up. And we created a program for them that actually got recognized, won a bunch of awards within the uh, within the industry. And it was tapping into the passion of, well, so when you talk about alcohol, that's a really sensitive topic, right, uh, you know, category. And so, but one of the things that was a problem or is a problem still is the whole machismo within the Latin, Latino community as far as what's going on, how do you act? And, and when you go to a lot of these soccer matches, you hear about soccer hooligans and you, you can kind of think a lot of the, really the bad things, right? So we wanted to kind of take that insight and turn it into something positive. And cre we created a program uh, that's called Siempre Tienes la Camiseta Puesta which translates, you always have your jersey on. So one of the things that's, that's a big deal within the Latino community, if you're wearing your jersey, that's a big deal. Like you're representing your country, right? And so the last thing you want to be doing is anything bad, not cool or anything like that while you're with the jersey. But the, so the strategy was um, you don't, you always have your jersey on, regardless if you actually have a jersey on, you got to represent and you got to be cool and you got to you know take care of people. And it was a really neat campaign that we used a bunch of influencers that was super cool that delivered the message. And it was just, uh, again, it was a really cool and it felt great and it tapped into this really amazing insight and people got it right. They were like, yeah, you're right. I always have, I always have the Jersey on beyond. And it had nothing to do with soccer right after we got went beyond soccer and it was a, a it became an annual campaign as a, as a cause marketing platform to get people to, to behave. Better. So that's one of my favorite ones about how to take the sport and go beyond. I love that. And especially because you can take that on so many platforms, Lupe, you mentioned influencers, but extending those into digital spaces where you can really get the legs and the leverage to connect with each country, you know, people from each country of origin with a unique message. So um, lots of very, very uh, good learning there. So I want to talk a little bit more about um you know, marketing in the Hispanic or the Latinx community. There, uh, you've alluded to this, Sarah. There are over 60 million people, over 20 countries of origin. You know, how do marketers approach this audience um, with such broad life experience, so much diversity within diversity? Like, what are some of the other key pillars we might want to look to beyond the sports realm? I'll jump in just like some, some quick thoughts that we've been looking at here. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I work really closely with our Hispanic strategists. Um, I will say, and I'm sure this is not gonna be a surprise to anybody, right? But it's really tough. It, it comes in waves. It, maybe as a result of the census, we'll see budgets increase, right? But like up until now, they've been decreasing. So it's really hard, um, Sheila, to, to, to reach everybody in the way you want to. But outside of football, um, we've been looking at art. Um, and then small business. I mean, obviously we're a bank, but there's so many small business owners that are Latino. Um, some of the fastest growing small businesses, it was, the, the segments are um, owned by Latinos. And so um, I, I would say art businesses um, and you, and you'll, I mean, this is anecdotal, you know, observation, but if you go on Instagram and you'll see like all these really cool, you know, Latina owned shops and it's, you know, really cute, like head wraps or dresses or Etsy stores or what have you. Um, yeah. so I think anyway, and um, I, I brought up the small business cause I do see it tied to the art and the culture. Um, and you know, soccer is definitely a piece of that. Um, but the music for sure is, is another big one. Um, and I haven't tied too much, um, again, budgets limiting, but you know, uh, and it, this is, this is a game that's played, um, not just in Mexico, but Loteria, which is like its own form of bingo. Right. So tying. Yeah. Um, that culture to sport um, has been some of the ways. So really, um, I wish we could do more, so much more, but those are just some some little quick hits. I I'll jump that. in here. I'll, I'll jump in here real quick. Um, I think I think she, Sheila, um, to answer your question, I think it's about uh, identifying common passion points, right? So mm -hmm. what are some of those common passion points? We said sports. So you said sports. Okay. So what are some insights within the sports world? Like, like I talked, uh, like I mentioned earlier about the program, but it's identifying those similar passion points and then try to bring them to life in relevant ways. So like, 
super simple. Say you identify a campaign around family. Everybody loves family. Family's uh, a universal passion that everybody loves, right? The matriarch, mom, what have you. You can come up with a simple campaign, but then whoever delivers it, what's nice about in the Latino space is there's Cuban accents, Dominican accents, there's Argentinian accent, and literally who delivers the message. That's all you have to do, that little nuance. And 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 you can actually get a nice, you can, you can engage the, a, a large chunk of the Latino community without alienating them because it's still based on family and that, that run common insight. So that's been one way I've been able to come, uh, come you know, come across and be able to overcome that, that particular challenge for sure. So anyway, wanted to share that. And I, and I think you hit a, a very key point there, Lupe, which is just paying attention to what is trending right now, especially in the day and age of social media. There are so many things that are happening that you got to be able to be creative and take advantage of. Here, you know, in, in, with the CAF, we have been able to do a campaign on 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 sneaker customization. It's you know, sneakers. It's such a big thing right now with with, huge, with, with, with the young crowd. The gaming industry is just so huge to the point that we have a league. Of, of, of video basketball games on it. So, you know, we run tournaments and then we have a guy who is actually the authority of shoe customization. And we have run, you know, contests on winning a pair made by him or design your own pair. And those are things that will match up so well with a brand. Yeah. Is that Souls by oh, Sir? That's Souls by Sir, correct? Yeah, yes. Amazing. He he does he does mo- almost every athlete in the in the in 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 the sports right now, and and he does like with the NFL, they do like my cost my cleats, and the players are allowed to wear cleats painted with the logos of the of the charities of their choice. So it, it's just a matter of taking advantage of what is hot and what is trending with all audiences, not just, you know, not just the young, the young crowd, but everybody has something going on that is, that is happening at the time. Absolutely. Now, as people who work in, you know, entertainment, media, publishing, advertising, you know, how do we think about the work that we do um, as part of creating culture? Um, and how do we invite brands in the right way to join a culturally driven conversation? So I'll jump, I'll jump in here real quick. Um, so, so for example, one of the things that I'm working on, one of the projects is in the world of podcasts. Everybody knows podcasts are on fire. You look at every data point, they're huge. I know both y'all, Sarah, Rafa, I know you guys probably have podcast stories to say, to tell, but like, for example, um, it's also about being selective of what you're going to, what kind of podcast, right? So I'm working with one that uh, one of the challenges within the Latino space currently when it comes to children is STEM education and their performance. Okay. They are just underperforming, even though they're the largest minority in, in public schools in the U S their, their, their scores are just not very good. Um, so when I'm talking, looking at trying to do something within podcast, um, I found a, a successful children's science podcast that already exists in English and made a, created a partnership and brought it to life uh, in Spanish and made it available in Spanish. And so those are just like, if you find what is something that the community needs um, and where there's an opportunity to do something about it. And that's something that brands could really jump on, right? There's so much need. I know Sheila, we just did, we did a great uh, project right now with one of our clients at, at Rocket Mortgage, right? About Latino veterans and homelessness and doing something that was a need that is out there within the community. And it's really working with your partners, working with us at NeuroDigital and saying, hey, here's what we're about. Um, here's what, what can you connect us with some of these needs that are out there in the community? And then we can figure out a way how to connect those dots. So that's probably the best way in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think it's very important, uh, whatever it is that you do, and it's very important to be, to make sure that the, the message is clear about your relationship with that community not being just transaction. I think it, that, that it is the, to me, has been the most important thing about whatever campaign you do and whatever approach you have into that community, just make sure that it is clear that it's not just a ticket sales or, or buy this product relationship. You know, the need for the community here in Cleveland, we are the least connected city in the United States. And we are doing programs with our partners here to, to help our community get connected to the, to the internet. So they don't have to go to the public library to, to get access to the internet. So I think that's, that, that, that goes miles farther than, than any other creative or fun giveaway that you can create. Yeah, I, I, um, I really like that, Rafa. Um, you know, trying to think about 
you know, from the brand side, the way the last few years I've been working with a small, um, and again, most my most of my nine to five job is focused on soccer. So I talk about it. So this is an appropriate, you know, panel conversation to join. But I started working with uh, this um, group called Footmex Nation, and they are the only um, digital like media organization that creates Mexican soccer content in English which is exactly the audience I'm trying to reach. We're not trying to target in Mexico, right? So there's certain organizations that may have a huge following, may have tons of you know viewers or readers, but that's not who I want. I want the Latino who's based in the US that's maybe first, second generation. Um, and that, you know, working with them has also led me, and I found them through Twitter, by the way, I think it's really important to listen to voices that you, we, you know, that we may not, or that brands may not typically hear because they're going through their large, agencies right and so you want to if you really want the authenticity you got to go with the smaller um media outlets in my view and, and sometimes it could just be a blogger right who maybe not have maybe doesn't have millions of followers but they've got ten thousand, and those ten thousand really understand who this person is and really understand the messaging and so that's kind of been my approach in terms of like a community uh, tie cultural tie with the work that i do and um i really wish more brands did that i think um, I, I have to credit, you know, uh, my boss for letting me run with it instead of going down the safe route, right. With here's a list of approved, you know, media outlets, you know, or influencers that maybe an agency has selected for them. So I, I think it's really key to kind of keep your ear to the ground and do some of that homework, which it does take time, but, um, that's, I think that's how you really get, um, that's how we don't sound like a bank all the time, right? In in the, in the work that we create. Right. Well, I'm going to push back a little bit, Rafa, on the transactional piece because I've actually done transactional types of programs that have worked. And let me explain to you where, where I think you were trying to go. It's about being authentic and being tra- transparent. In other words, yeah. I'm not trying to get something over on the community. Like, hey, here's why we're doing this because this is what we need. And there's a transaction involved. That's okay, right? Because yeah. it's... It, it, you're being straight, you're being authentic, because I think authentic voices and having that being real makes sense. So, for example, a Wells Fargo, sorry, I'm a, Sarah, in my opinion, can be transactional. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we're going to do this because that's their industry. So I think that's fine. I think uh, that that makes sense within the community and, and, and you're being transparent. There's no like the, the legal copy <laughs> at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and your first child is going to go to, you know, to Wells Fargo. Um, you, know, you don't want to do that, but that's kind of where, um, you know, as long as you're authentic, you're transparent and, and then you can be transactional. So that would be my own little pushback Rafa, on the transaction. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I think at the end of the day, if we're trying to be here in the community and try, you know, with, with trying to how to help the community. And I think is if you're able to understand the whole scope of the needs of the community, aside from what you have to offer, I think you go you go a lot farther. But yeah, you're right. If you if you're transparent, anything goes. Well, really, right? Yeah. 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 No, that's huge. I I want sorry the, the 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 transaction or or the to not make it transactional is really key. I, and I think about. Uh, when I hear about brands or teams, well, it doesn't have to be soccer, um, but even even MLS sometimes says, oh, you know, we we need to, focus, you know, be MLS gets, you know, kind of the kudos for being uh, uh, close to the Hispanic community. But I think they do an OK job. I don't think they do a great job. And when I hear teams say, Sarah, how do we reach the Hispanic community? I think about um, what Rafa was saying. And I think about Stacey Abrams and what she did for Georgia election. I'm, I, I really get into politics. But that was years in the making, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's you got to establish relationships, uh, maybe one on one, which is not efficient all the time. But it does. It's a long term plan. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah, I think right, you're a thousand. You're, no, Sarah, you know what? You're a thousand. It, it, that's why I say it's not a one off type. You don't ever try to think of doing the one off coming in and do something around this World Cup time period. And I'll see you later. I'll see you next. I'll see yeah. you in four years, right? Um, it's one of those things where you need to take your time, invest, be thoughtful, do it right. Uh, because that's, because that's the, if there's going back to some of the pitfalls, what we see a lot of brands do is that they think they can come in show up for a little bit. Ah, they love me. And then I'm out of here right now. I'll see you in a couple of years. So that's a big one. That's a big. There you go. Yeah, that's right. Lupe. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is it's not a one-off it's a relationship. And we had this debate about whether it can be transactional, but we can 
have transactions if there's value exchange. So let's yep. be transparent about it. Let's let everyone understand what's happening. And then um, one really important thing, and Sarah, you were literally speaking my language. I'm like, wait, does she have the Mirror Digital Media Kit? The point about diverse voices. Uh, we are all about diverse voices at Mirror Digital. And I think that is so important to have those authentic, um, you know, folks that are speaking on your behalf that don't have to be the largest, but have to be really connected into the community. And, and then finally, the thing that I heard as we surface this question about needs, uh, you know, how do you understand what those needs are? You have to have people who really are immersed in the communities and, you know, not not doing a drive by, not there on vacation, but really have a deep understanding of what's important and what's gonna move the needle. So those are all amazing, very powerful, powerful conversation. Um, what I'd like to talk about one more thing, um, because we're digital, you know, we always wanna hear the cool digital stuff happening. And Rafa, you started to talk about this with what's going on in esports. but what are the trends that you guys are seeing in digital and mobile and, um, you know, kind of next generation uh, media that is connecting well with um, Hispanic and Latinx communities? Yeah, I'd say, you know, Sheila, which is why I was, I was excited to, to learn more about what you, you know, the work that you're doing. I do think, um, and I think social media has certainly elevated these voices, right? Who, who may have had blogs, but for whatever reason, they're getting more traction on Instagram, right? So I think, um, I think it's, and I, I don't know how, it's like, how do we convince, especially the big brands, right? I get lots of proposals, you know, with, with small, um, smaller media companies, who are, you know, who want to work with us. And I'm just like, sometimes it's too small. You know, our agency only wants to deal with this many viewers. I'm rambling a little bit here. Um, but I think it's going to be up to like the the people on the brand side to like really push for it and advocate for this. And I, I personally, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got maybe a different lens on it because I'm, I'm working for a bank, which we, we invest in small businesses. So that's kind of where my head is. I'm like, I want to support these small businesses. And so um, that comes to mind a lot. All right, to answer your question, um, all important I, points. Yeah, making. I was going to oh, say that's all good stuff. Love all that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and also, yeah, what are you seeing in the innovation space? Yeah, I will say. I mean, the esports piece. You know what's been surprising to me? Um, I know it's a hot topic within sports, but when I I sponsored three esports tournaments, and most of the participants were Latino males, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, so I'll just share that, and I, and. One, they were Latino males, and two, many people had not met each other in person. They knew their handles online, and then they got together for the tournament. And it was really neat to see, although they're competitors, like, oh, you're, you know, at so and so, like, yeah, I'm so and so, <laughs> and it was like, you know, cool, cool to meet you. Um, I thought that that element of gaming plus community plus Latino segment was really cool. Yeah. Alpha, I think it's, it's important. On I think it's important to surround surround yourself with people that are in the audience that you're trying to reach because the the, the old the old commandment that you are not your audience I think is even more alive today that than, than way before you know I'm not aware of everything that is going on and I'll, I'll tell you a story of how how different things are right now every year we go to broadcast meetings with the NBA and every year for the last seven years, the things that is that they're talk about, like Twitch broadcast with no with no play by play announcer, but just the fans with the with the headphones and mic calling the game and talking about it, and and you know on the on the east on the gambling side, on it, it is unbelievable all the things that are out there that I wasn't aware of. For example, when we started the E League, the the, the NBA two K. Now we have, I think is. 22 of the 30 teams have a have a an e-league franchise that we play. We we drafted a kid from Spain so we could actually reach out over the, over over the water over there. You know, the, you uh, Sarah, you mentioned it. Latinos, uh, millennials are huge when it comes to to gaming. So I think it's just a matter of knowing which way or which audience you're trying to reach. And like I said, surround yourself with people around that because. It, it, it is. It changes every day when it comes to those trends. Yeah, I, th I think the best way I'll, I'll put innovation, Sheila, um, today is there has never been a time, and it's only going to get deeper, 
where one-in-one -on -one engagement, technology is bringing one-on-one -on -one engagement happening more than ever in the history of marketing and advertising because of technology. So we have Instagram, we have, you know, there's the, the cameos of the world that where you can direct certain messages. There's every kind of thing, but it's all about this connecting one-on-one. -on -one. And so it makes it so important um, for brands to have that one-on-one -on -one strategy. Like, how am I going to engage one-on-one -on -one with my target consumer? And how am I going to be authentic? Because we were talking within the Latino community, for example, how can you talk to a Cuban versus a Dominican versus a Puerto Rican and be authentic and original, right? But now you start adding the entire world, a Texan versus a Californian, you know, <laughs> regardless of language, right? Forget the language. Language is just a tactic, right? But how do you do it culturally and, and be able to do it authentic? So from an innovation, I see every new technology that's coming, that's been coming, like Rafa, you, you named the list. Um, it's about that, right? So forget about the, 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 the tactic, right? Forget about Instagram or what have you. It's going to happen digitally. And what's, dig what's happening in the digital space is how you're going to be, be authentic and be real. And it's going to be about one-on-one -on -one communication. So that's what I see from as far as innovation and figure, people are figuring out how to get, how to do it better and better and better. So Look now people, you can, from your watches, right? They're on you. So it's like technology is all around. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Lupe and Rafa, as you were talking, there's one company, it's it's still in startup mode. It's called Click TV, founded by Latino. But what they're doing is they want to create, I'm trying to think how to explain this better, uh, how to like succinctly explain this, but think of a, a website. It could be app-based or website where it's got content that's focused on multicultural audiences. And so these, these content creators are, and I'm not really in the space, but it's big, right? So these are like nail artists, right? Or they're fashion designers or they're tattoo artists. Or, well, maybe tattoo is not the best example, but essentially they're, they're producing content. It's on the site, it's quick bits. And then you can, you can purchase the items or their clothes or whatever they're wearing from that site. Um, but the focus there was technology, instant, like, you know, instant purchase and multicultural um, right. content creators and audience, which, yeah. again, there's like millions and millions of followers and they're super, super engaged. Um, and so it's it's still super new. But I thought as yeah. you were well, describing, now, I'm like, that's it, what it's like. Now, to get to certain thing. tactics, like obviously the NFTs are huge right now. Everybody's doing mm. it, right? Uh, so that's huge. Bitcoin, you know, digital, uh, that's huge. And where that's going to end up. So there's some really cool tactical things that are coming that, to I'll be the first one to say, I, I've i had people actually sit down and try to explain it to me, like in my face. <laughs> and I'm still kind of like, wait, what's an NFT again? But again, it's, it's but I'm, apparently I'm do, I, I'm hoping create some. I didn't even realize that. But and we're probably doing it right now. This is probably could be an NFT, what we're doing here. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I think those are the probably the ones, the big ones that I see that I know that are already kind of big, that already developed some scale, that we could probably figure out some really cool ways to leverage uh, for to help brands go back to connecting with this multicultural audience, for sure. Fantastic. Um, lots of innovation. I, I love all this great stuff that you guys are sharing. I want to take it down now to, or connect it rather to, you know, personal and, um, really to talk a little bit about what your heritage and your culture means to you. Uh, and we've, we've touched on this a little bit, but, um, you know, how do you think about expressing your culture and, you know, bringing your authentic self to work and to everywhere else? And how do we think about celebrating um, Latino and Hispanic identity, especially this month, because it's Hispanic Heritage Month, but really every month. Uh, so I just would love to hear your thoughts on that. I think the most important one is to be proud and loud about who we are. <laughs> loud, loud. Yes. I, I'm, good at be, I'm good at being loud, working on the crowd. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, I think you said it, Sheila, it, it's about celebrating our heritage and what we bring to this country every day, not, not just on Hispanic Heritage Month. Because this month is the time where everybody comes out and dresses as, the, as the, the, our ancestors, and then we forget about them the rest of the 11 months. So I think that's one of the issues that I have with with, with, with what we celebrate on, 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 on Hispanic Heritage Month. But at the end of the day, I work, like I told you, every day on making sure that the community as a whole knows that we are police officers, we are doctors, 
We are store owners, we are small business owners, we are entrepreneurs, we are part of the community we live in and we bring a lot to it. And I think that's what we gotta be proud of and make sure that everybody knows about. That Latinos, wherever we come from, and I know we are a very rich culture because we're different, we have all colors, we have all religions, but we are one powerful group of people that bring as much or even more than any other community that we live in. So I think that's what we gotta be proud of and loud. I always say loud is very important for me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I get it. So cultural identity is always a complicated one for me, right? Like, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Palestinian. I was born in Puerto Rico. Um, my mom's Puerto Rican, my dad's Palestinian, but I, I my accent is Mexican. Um, and I feel like I, <laughs> I identify, I, I feel like I know more Mexican culture than, than my own, but I think, you know, as I'm, as, but I can't claim, I will never say I'm Mexican or even attempt to speak for one, but I think about what Rafa was saying. Um, I try, I, and the older I get, I think the more I seek the knowledge in terms of like trying to understand the history of my cultures more. And so like one thing I think about is, uh, is a terrible moment for, you know, Puerto Rican history, but a lot of women in Puerto Rico were, um, essentially guinea pigs for birth control in the United States. So I think about the women who, you know, are, are you know, just get their prescription. It's really easy for them, you know, and I don't think they, they realize the history of these um, kind of forced testing, right? So I, I think about things like that on the Arab side, like I think about the Arabic numbers and the numbers that we know today, one through, you know, zero infinity, right? Like that came from the region where my dad's from. So I think um, history is becoming more and more important to me in sharing that history. Um, and, and like the, the the soccer, the sports stuff is fun and the music stuff is fun. And, you know, Jalen and Shakira is like the best, like halftime, you know, beyond, uh, after Beyonce for me. But I think the education, like how the rest of the United States or the world benefits from the cultures that we bring, I think is really important for me that, to get some of that messaging out. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think for me, it's, a, it, it, and, and I love what both y'all shared there. Um, so again, weird background, born and raised in the U.S. So my family is is from South Texas, which it was t- Texas was used to be part of Mexico. So when the you know, so we were from the same, we've been from the same part of the world ge- geographically forever. It just happened the border moved on us, right? So it's a weird like we never did. So it's, people ask like, when did your family get here, right? <laughs> it's like mm, uh, we've been here forever, right? So it's it's kind of a weird uh, conversation. But for me, uh, to answer your question, how do I express my culture? Um, it's about I I personally like by helping others, all right. And what do I mean by that? Um, it's like there's other people that I know that are struggling within the Latino space. That it, it, like when I was getting my career, when I was trying to get going, I just needed somebody to help me. Like just I didn't. I, it wasn't necessarily about money. It's not about that. It's just can you just talk to me, please? Like. I'm, I want to do this. I'm thinking about this or what are my, to listen to what my dreams are. What do I, and it's, it's how do I, best way to, for me to express my culture is to pass it on. Right. And share it. So I try to do that. So I think that's the best way myself personally, you know, for, to answer that question. Well, thank you for sharing that. All that is, um, you know, important, uh, important personal elements. Um, and just, you know, continuing on that vein, as we think about these important pillars and trends and connecting with the Latino community, um, w- you know, what are some of those um, things personally that you think make sense? And you know, when you felt most proud to be a Latino, so how do we connect those dots and take that personal and help it manifest into um, ways to connect with the culture and con- the community at large? Um, for me, I, I'm really engr- uh, I'm really engrossed in politics, and so I look at and again, it's it's really easy to 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 look at the celebrities, right? Everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people admire celebrities. Um, but I think of people like Julian Castro, right? Um, who was the mayor of San Antonio in Texas, and like he was a presidential candidate, and to have somebody so intelligent and compassionate. Um, and really think about the world besides his, own, you know, himself and, you know, Texas. And um, I don't know, to, to me, that really speaks volumes. And those are the people I look at and like, damn, I'm like, you know, really impressed and in awe. And I think um, you don't have to be like those type of success stories, but there's so many of those um, people that just don't get the attention for whatever reason. I would love to see more of that. That's a great example. 
I, I agree with that. I think there's so many people from our community that have, I know we all share a lot of the same story. We came here, you know, I came here when I was 14, 15 years old. The only word I knew how to say in English was no. And the only person that spoke my language in high school was the Spanish teacher, a class I didn't take, but sports, playing basketball and, and, and football kind of helped me make friends and help me learn the language other than watching General Hospital and reading the newspaper. But I think we all should be proud of everybody that has come to this country basically to start from zero. And, and, and our good majority of our community have come to this country to do good. And I think that is what we have to make sure that people understand and people see that. You know, it, 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 you mentioned it. I wish there was more about just hearing stories of small business owners or people that have really put everything they had in their pockets to make sure they to start a business or to keep raising their family. And there's so many stories of that in this country that, that, that I think somebody, some brand out there should take advantage of the fact to, to help our community be proud of ourselves. Because I think yeah. speaking about being proud of ourselves, we got to help people get, be proud of themselves. People think that they, because they haven't made it or they haven't won the lottery yet, they haven't, they haven't really had, they don't have a successful story. Yeah. But just the fact that they have come here with leaving everything behind and start a new life and contribute to this beautiful country, I think is, is a, it's something to be proud of, of anybody you run into in the, in the street. I mean, my personal wish, and 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 both of y'all are going to go in there, and and Sarah, you mentioned, you know, um, Castro and you know his twin brother, and here's here's being the biggest challenge, um, I think, culturally, is we do not have our Martin Luther King like in the black community. We've have we've had somebody that's good Mexican, big big in the Cuban community, big in the Puerto Rican community, but not one that can represent and be that that bright shining light for the Latino community for every or, or, or that speaks for us when something happened, when something's Correct. wrong Correct. done to us. And, and so culturally that's been the biggest miss currently. So if there is an individual, a Latino, young, smart, that has a heart that wants to give and can, and is willing to sacrifice and invest in the time to understand all the communities, Okay, first of all, think about the task and how hard that would be. Because we were just talking how hard it is for a brand to just communicate to them, right, as a marketing. And they got, you know, the ones that have gazillions of dollars have a hard time doing it, right? So imagine what it is for somebody that just wants to be able to do that. And so that's the biggest, like, missed culture. Personally, that I'm also kind of like, mm, like, I wish somebody could could step up and, and, and get there. And so um, I think um, helping or identifying or doing something uh, that could help bring that person, that young person, whoever it is, that's probably sitting in a classroom somewhere right now, that's going to be that individual, that would be pretty amazing. So I'm hearing there's, you know, such a rich history and lots of things to be proud of. So how are we telling those stories of, you know, kind of everyday leaders, people who are building the communities brick by brick? And then how do we think about rallying around um you know, an Uber leader, for lack of a better term, just someone who can really, you know, bring the community together in times of need or in times of change. So those are um, those are really great points to, to think about. Um, I'm going to start to wind us down because I do want to leave a couple of moments for questions. But I did want to ask, you know, what, you know, this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much. What lessons or lesson would you like to leave um, our viewers with? Like, you know, what's that one nugget that they should take away from this conversation that uh, you think is most important? Okay. For, for, for me, um, I think taking maybe the uncharted, like I, I think about the work I did with, with the, the Foot Max Nation and it was, you know, on nobody's radar, right? Um, but I felt like we did some really important, impactful work. I think going down the unbeaten path, I think, is really key for brands, um, especially as everybody's going down the digital path, especially in times of COVID. I think it's going to be really important to find um, unique voices um, out there for sure. Definitely. I think in this day and age that we're living in right now, I think that the opportunity out there for brands to really take advantage and, and really come close to the community 
is there. I think the vehicle of sports is one that <laughs> will take you very far. And, 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 and that's it. I mean, my message would be to just take advantage of the opportunity that is wide open right now to really come out there and shine with our community. There's a lot of needs. There's a lot of ways to reach out. And, and I think that that would be that would, your brand will get taken care of itself if, if, if the community gets taken care of. So I think I think that's that that would be my message. I love it. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and, and Rafa, you kind of I'm going to be more more transactional like. Like, seriously, like, I think we did a great job of the emotional, connecting, cultural, authenticity, uh, transparency, and so forth. But let's get down and, like, you need to be planning for this now, okay? This is not, t- tomorrow's too late, okay? You're already behind. If you haven't been thinking about it, and you haven't been putting budgets aside for this, and have thought leaders behind it to help guide you, yeah, maybe you don't understand and you don't get it. We do, right? That's what we do. And and it, it Go. The best time to start making money is today, right now. So, so that's my transactional uh, conversation that I'm going, right? Again, that, that's what I said. Your brand will be good and we'll be in a good spot. That's right. right. If the community sure. comes along with it. Yeah, I mean, they're there. They're there. They've been there. You know, where have you been? I guess that's my yeah. that's my question. Um, we had a couple questions come in and the first one I just wanted to share that I thought uh, was so great. Something that Rafa said, you know, that he's loud and proud. Uh, and I um, had someone from the audience ask, how do we um, as, a, as the Latino community be loud and proud? And um, is there a role for uh, brands or should we expect them to play a role in that in terms of the community's formation and evolution? I think there is. I, I, again, going back to what we just said, just you come unite your brand with featuring all the great stories that we have out there. I think it, I think it's, it's a great way to to be loud about what we bring because a lot of a lot of the misconception here is that that Latinos maybe don't bring to this community what, or, or people don't realize what we bring to the community. Right? I don't know if you guys are aware of what Kelly Osborne said on a on a show the other day. Uh, I think it was the view. I mean, it's a that is that is a, a thought that a lot of people have, and and we are. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with 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 working on in cleaning toilets. I done it before. I cleaned toilets that I didn't use, and I'm I'm proud of it because that's how I paid my college tuition, right? But we are more than that. We I just have to climb from a little deeper to make it to where we are. And I think that opportunity for brands to connect to that story is there for the taking. It's like low hanging fruit. Absolutely. The strivers making things happen. Any other final comments or thoughts that anyone wants to share before we wrap up? Sarah? Um, what, what, this this has come up a couple of times. I've been thinking about it, but I didn't articulate it yet, but Lupe kind of touched on it too about just and I think maybe addresses is it Jaylene's question. Um, I, I think, and I look at the at the Black and African American community, and I see people from different areas: academia, music, sports, um, business, and they all seem to to know each other. And if they don't know each other, they all seem to lift each other up anyway, right? And I think we could be doing that more in the Latino community to help us be loud and proud. In in, in my opinion, from you know outside looking in. Yeah, support, recognize, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and I think, final yeah, I was just to say, I think just to kind of echo what Rafa and Sarah was sharing, it's about communication, right? Um, I think at the end of the day, it's about having a conversation. So I'm going to go back to um, the question about loud and proud, because I think that, 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 that I find that really interesting. And Rafa being loud and proud and what that means. And it's really not about, you know, yes, there's the actual being loud, uh, which I was yeah. <laughs> <that up. laughs> but it's, it's about now. You know, right now there's so much accumulated. I mean, in the digital space specifically, I want to bring it back to why we're here, right? In the digital space specifically, what used to be that individual that nobody ever even heard of, that one person in somewhere where nobody even heard of, can share a picture, right? Can share a moment, can share a, a thought, and it can be go global before you know it, right? It's like it's it's the it's just an amazing. So how to be loud? It's like be proud and, and and share it and don't be ashamed and 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 don't worry about being judged and all these other things. It's like, 
get out there, put it out there and, and, and have the courage to do it. And I think at the end of the day is, is have the courage to, to be you and be authentic and be yourself and put yourself out there. So I guess that's the one thing I would want to let everybody know. And that's an amazing point to end on. It starts with every single one of us being loud and proud as individuals, sharing our stories and uplifting one another. So thank you so much for joining us for Mirror Moments Episode 8 to have a conversation uh, to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and uh, Latinx heritage all year long. And while we started with football, football, there's so much more um, to connecting with the Latino community. Thank you all for joining and we'll see you next time.